Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. We are picking up with day three of our devotion on the Bible app titled, When Your Way Isn't Working. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, and I'm also going to pick with the Devo. The scripture is John chapter 15, verse 4, and it says this, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither you can bear fruit unless you remain in me. The devotional is titled, It's All About the Connection. And it says this, I feel like I need to make a disclaimer. I live on a farm. I'm not a farmer. My wife and daughter operate the farm. I just volunteer sometimes as a farm hand. It's probably fair to say I have no idea what I'm doing, but I do know this much. It's a lot of work. Having any kind of harvest requires a lot of preparation. Having any kind of production means that you've got to be really intentional and you've got to do that ahead of time. In John 15, we read some of the final words of Jesus to his closest followers, and he's going to talk to them about production, about harvest. And Jesus knows that later the same evening, he'll be arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knows he's going to be leaving his disciples with a mission to take the good news of the gospel to the ends of the earth. It's difficult to overstate the magnitude of this assignment. There's a lot that's going to have to happen. The task ahead will require incredible work and all kinds of sacrifice. You might think that with Jesus' final words, he would give them, you know, like a five-year plan that lays out expectations and outlines the pace of productivity required to have this type of impact. You might expect him to hand out like a checklist, a task list with some comprehensive strategy for success, or maybe provide a series of charts that could plot out the actionable items that need attention in order to pull off this feat. At the very least, you would assume that Jesus would print out some kind of organizational chart and would give official job descriptions and best practices, but instead of focusing on the work of production, Jesus prioritizes the value of connection. Oh, that's good. Jesus knew that if his followers would stay connected to him, then production would come. But if they pursue production at the expense of the connection, then it's not going to matter how hard they work. Jesus put it this way in John 15, verses 4 and 5. He said, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus makes it clear that production matters, but the priority has to be the connection. When we stay connected to Jesus, we'll bear much fruit. If we prioritize production at the expense of connection, we can't do anything. Over the years, I've heard a number of messages on that text from John 15. Usually, the messages emphasize the work of fruit bearing. The message puts the priority on production. The idea is that when your way isn't working, you've got a production problem and you need to work harder at producing more fruit to fix the problem. The application goes something like this. It's time to examine your life and look for the fruit. If there isn't enough fruit, then it's time to buckle down and get to work. You don't want to be a stick with no fruit that gets thrown into the fire. So you better set your alarm and rise and grind. It's time to hustle harder. That is not at all the message that Jesus is giving us in John 15. In fact, I would say it's a dangerous misinterpretation of his words. It's not that faithfulness and fruitfulness don't matter. It definitely does matter. But the idea is that we can't make that happen out of our own efforts. If you make production your primary priority, Jesus makes it clear your way isn't going to work. It's all about connection. And I think this one is pretty self-explanatory, but I just figured I would open up about something really quickly. Um, Tori and I have what we call our business therapist. He is just like the perfect one-size-fits-all solution to Tori and I's questions about how we navigate work with family, how we navigate trying to grow a business with family, how do we navigate working inside of a business that is so interlinked with our spirituality? How do we navigate this? And the gentleman who's doing the coaching is done all of the above. I mean, I'm pretty sure he has seven children and 
his family life just seems like it's doing so well, but not without the efforts and not without the hardships and growth from it. So he's sharing from a lot of experience, but there was one thing he shared with us that it just, it's like, it's like, I don't want to hear it, you know, and I don't know if you're the type of person you don't want to hear it either, but he shared that there is a season in his life that lasted a good chunk of time where he was doing the same thing that this devotional is saying not to do, which is like, oh, I'm not producing the fruit that I'm that I'm I'm putting. I'm I'm not getting, I'm not reaping what I'm putting in. Or even more. I'm not reaping more than what I'm putting in, right? I'm not growing this investment. I'm not stewarding it well. Like what's happening here? It feels like what I'm putting in, I'm get, I'm putting in two and getting one back. This doesn't make any sense. What's happening? And he shared that he learned that it wasn't up to him. And we can go deeper on that in another devotional. But what he found out is, is that when he stopped working so hard, when he stopped trying to control it, when he stopped making it about him, whenever he was stopped white knuckling or forcing things, all the fruit came. Literally, everything that he had wanted came whenever he stopped forcing it to happen. He he thought he could work so hard to make it happen, but it actually happened when he didn't work as hard. And so I'm not advocating for us to just not work hard. I do believe that we have to work with excellence, but there's really something here about, hey, are we connected? Because whenever we look at our life and maybe we're not seeing the fruit that we wish we saw, our initial reaction, at least for most of us, is like, oh, I just need to put in a little bit more work. And I'm not being accusatory there. I'm just saying it's a natural reaction for us to say, oh, well, if I'm not in the shape I want to be in, then guess what? I need to go get in the gym. Or, oh, if my bank account doesn't look like I want it to look like, okay, I need to save better. I need to steward finances better. I need to find a side job. Or, you know, you just, you can kind of like think your way out of these situations. But there's something so powerful about remembering the first thing, which is our connection. Because what the author said is so true that Jesus didn't lay out a standard operating procedures for us as believers in terms of like how to get the most success as we share the gospel with other people. No, he said, remain in me and I will also remain in you. He said, and that is the key to bearing much fruit. But if you don't remain in me, you can bear nothing. You will bear no fruit. And so the key for us, if we're not seeing the fruit, is to make sure that we're connected to him, to make sure that we're plugged in, to make sure, and and via being plugged into him, we may learn some hard truths that maybe we're playing a game that Jesus didn't want us to play, or maybe we're pursuing a future that Jesus doesn't have for us. And maybe the lack of fruit in that certain area may point to him saying, hey, I got a lot of fruit, but in this direction for you, you never know. But it starts with, you know, hearing from him, from connecting to him and 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 him being the source and not our own work ethic, our own tenacity, our own perseverance. Um, yeah, so this is a, a fun reminder for us all that it's not just about how hard we work or how intentional we are. It's about who we're connected to. It's about who you know, right? It's not what you know, it's who you know. This is a situation, do we know him? Are we connected with him? And then let the hard work come from that place. I'm gonna pray. Oh Lord, we wanna be connected to you. We know what it's like to not be connected. We know what it's like to be connected as well. We know that when we are truly operating inside of your will, we can feel the comfort from you. We can feel the peace from you. We can feel the protection. We can feel the joy. We can feel all the things that you offer us freely, God. We can feel that. But when we're not connected to God, we can feel the strife. We can feel the stress. We can feel the anxiety. We can feel the worry. We can feel the the spinning out of control. We can feel dazed and confused. So Lord, do whatever you need to help us stay plugged into you, to stay connected to you. Aside from just how much fruit that we'll bear because of you, God, we just wanna feel connected to you. We wanna feel close to you. So help us find ways to make sure we're staying connected. We love you, Lord, and we pray in your son's heavenly name, amen. 
And then y'all now is that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece, and don't forget that we love you. We love you, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Adios.